Folks, what's going on? Recently we've been building this uh, gaming PC. If you haven't seen video one and two, go check those out. I'll have it linked in the description. It has the step-by-step -step build on our parts list. On this one, we're gonna be talking about how to download all the software you'll need in order to game and record and stream that footage on the internet, because I'm assuming that's what you all wanna do. Now, before we get into that, I have benchmarked these computers on Total War Warhammer 2 and Total War 3 Kingdoms. I will be showing that later in this video, just so you all get an idea, but this is an example. This is footage from a benchmark. You can see how good the game is running on this PC, so you don't have to break the bank to play these games well, and I'm excited. We'll talk more about that as we get into it. Now, first thing you're going to want to do when you get the new computer booted up and you're into Windows is go to the MSI website for your motherboard, which you can see here, and download all the drivers. What are drivers? Drivers are software that tells your computer how to use the hardware it has properly. Um, so you're going to have drivers for your LAN, um, so your internet connection. You're going to have drivers for sound, uh, for your chipset, uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, you can download them individually, as you just saw me clicking there. Or you can come and download what I would recommend is this MSI Dragon Center app. You can do it all at once. If you don't like having that kind of software in your computer, then of course you can do it individually. I would also download this CPU-Z. That is a good test for our processor to make sure everything's functioning properly. When you're done with that, head over to the MSI Afterburner website. Afterburner is software that helps track different stats on your computer as well as giving you specific control to overclock your graphics card. You do not have to have an MSI graphics card to use this software. I highly recommend you download it. It's very useful. It helps you get free performance out of your graphics card and it also helps you track stats. Then we're gonna go download OBS Studio. This is free. All of this stuff that I'm telling, showing you is free. OBS Studio helps us record and stream game footage. Here's the Dragon Center app that I told you to download. I'm just going to show you here that as you click on it, it'll tell you what version of all the drivers you have. You can use the scan button. And if there are new drivers, it will show you those new drivers in a screen that I'm about to go click into here. And you can click on them, hit install. It just makes it very easy to keep up with drivers. So that's why I recommend that software. But again, it's optional. You can do it manually if you choose. Now this is CPU-Z. It's going to tell us what frequency our processor is running at so we can make sure it's performing right, and we can benchmark it. I'm going to benchmark this against a very expensive i7-8700K from Intel because they have the same number of cores and threads. Here's the results of that. A little bit lower on our processor in single core, but actually better in multi-core. Just shows you how good of a value this processor is. I'll show you a little bit more on that later, but everything's working as it should be. Now we're gonna pull up Afterburner over here and show you how it can help you track. So when I was running that benchmark, you can actually see the temperatures here on all my cores. I did a test on this. It actually never goes above 71, even on a long-term full load. And it just helps show me that the processor is functioning the way it uh, should. That's why you should have the software. Helps you track the performance of your different parts, make sure nothing's overheating, and allows you to maximize the performance out of your new system and it's all for free, so very nice software to have. Next, we'll jump into OBS here and start working on some settings. Um, so we're gonna click the settings, and the first thing we're gonna do is uh, go to the video settings and determine the base canvas and the frame rates. The base canvas should be the resolution your monitor is running. And then if you want to, it has a rescale option, so maybe that's the way you wanna output the video. So say maybe you're in 2K and you wanna output at 1080p, that's fine, your frame rate is also on that screen. Now we're gonna move over to the output and then recording tab. If you need to, you can pause the video here to look at all these settings. I have it all set up here the way you'll wanna do it if you have a similar build to this. And of course you can give me any questions you have, but just make sure all your settings are set up this way. It'll, it'll ensure that um, you're going to get good performance while still getting a really good video quality. Basically all we've done here is set the encoder type, the bit rate, the output file type, like I said, if you have any specific questions, you can also choose where your video is going to be stored by clicking that browse button you saw me hovering on right there. Um, you can see that. So yeah, just follow these settings. If you have any specific questions about these settings, let me know in the comments. But I've tested these with this build and it is working good. It would be good enough quality that I could upload it to my own YouTube page. So like I said, just check these out, follow the settings. What this means is right now we're using our our processor to do the encoding. You can also use your graphics card. 
that's totally viable. Um, but right now it's set to processor encoding and it's working well. As for the streamer, here's some settings that I use myself. Again, you can change that encoder setting to processor or graphics card. This is an example of running it off the graphics card, but this would give you a really good 1080p stream, assuming that your speed was good enough to meet the uh, bit rate that I have set. So again, you can copy those settings. The next thing you wanna look at is how to set up scenes. A scene in OBS is how you capture what you want to. So I'm giving you an example here of creating a new scene. You would just give it a name, and then within that scene, so like you can see this one, I'm capturing the display. If I wanted to add something, you push that plus button, and here's all the options for things that you can add. You can put audio files, you can put screen capture, you can put game capture. Of course, game capture is what you're gonna use whenever you wanna actually capture Warhammer footage. You can resize, you know, you can see me doing that right now, so you can click that red box there and slide it to resize what you're actually recording. You can put certain layers on top with the arrows that I have here. These are your sound settings for your microphone and your audio and any other audio that'll be coming in will be listed there. You can set your scene transitions. Uh, so like if you switch from one scene to the other, it'll do a nice fade. And then that's your start recording button for local recordings. And then right above it is the start streaming button if you're wanting to start streaming. Um, so that just kind of gives you a general layout of how to use OBS. Now I'm actually using it in the game capture mode and we're gonna capture the benchmark test uh, for the battle in Total War Warhammer 2. Now remember, we're gonna see the results of this benchmark. This benchmark is taking, taken while recording. So keep in mind that this performance is being captured on this PC while I'm actually recording and encoding this locally as well. So this is with the performance hit that you'll take from recording. So this is a good scenario of if you were in a worst case scenario, recording and playing the game, what will my performance look like? Well, that's what this is. You can see that a lot of times when zoomed out, of course, we're running at a very high refresh rate, over 60 frames a second. This is 1080p ultra graphics. That's what I showed whenever we were loading in. This is the ultra graphics preset. And we're gonna average over 70 frames a second um, even with the recording turned on, which is very impressive performance from this little PC. And now over into 3K. Now 3K runs at a lower frame rate in general. Again, ultra 1080p settings. We're gonna run the battle benchmark. And I'll just kind of give you an idea what it does here. 3K does, as a general rule, run at a lower frame rate. It's, it's a different type of game. It tends to use more processor threads and has less variance from one system build to the other in terms of frame rate. It's not as dependent on a really fast single core processor as Warhammer 2 is. So even though the overall frame rate in 3K is lower, I do find that it still um, is relatively smooth, all things considered. And you can see that here, that we're not running at near as high of a frame rate as we were on Warhammer 2, but the overall experience you're seeing is very smooth. Um, and But that's just the nature of Three Kingdoms. It's a different game. Every game is different. You kind of have to feel it out. But you can see even there, we're averaging 60 frames a second on ultra settings. The goal of this build was to be able to game in 1080p. And clearly, we can game in 1080p without any issues. Now, lastly, I kind of wanted to just give you an idea. How does this build compare to, number one, maybe a cheaper version of it, which you can see here on the left? So I've used the 3D Mark benchmarks. If you're not familiar with these, you can look up a video, but basically it's a benchmark where you can compare how different hardware hits the same uh, software um, and kind of see how it performs. Right here in the second column is the current build that I'm using. You can see me highlighting the differences between a lesser graphics card and a lesser Ryzen processor, all running on a similar board. A uh, little bit of difference in the test, not a huge difference. So if you wanted to build a cheaper version of this build, you could, and you would sacrifice a little performance, but it, it wouldn't be massive. You know, it's an option for you to still game well and save a little money. So ours again is in the second column. And this third column here is a 12 core, or sorry, a yeah, a 12 core, 24 thread Ryzen 3900X. You can see it just crushes the CPU score. Um, almost doubles it up from where we're at, and that's to be expected. It's about double the processor. And then in the last column, I comp I'm comparing it to an i9-9900K. The 9900K is like the king of gaming these days. So I'm just putting all these benchmarks up here. You can pause it. You can look at the performance across the columns, run the percentages. I'm just posting this up here so you can see how this build compares to a very expensive build that I'm running. And again, just showing you the price here of a 6-core, 12-thread Intel processor very, very high, and you would also have to pay for the more expensive Intel motherboard. 
While on the converse, look at the price of our processor right now. So much lower. And this one's new, not used, so you get all that warranty, and it comes with a cooler. So this is a great build. You've seen all the performance here. You've seen how the price stacks up. If you have any questions, let me know. Again, pause it, look at the statistics, tell me what else you want to know about this. I've given you a basic how-to and how to get ready to set up and record your own games. Maybe I can make another video and talk a little bit better how to upload to YouTube. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed it. I will see you soon. Air of Carthage, sign.